Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Rodney, and it's wonderful to welcome you here to St. Paul Lutheran in Anamosa. For those of you joining us on our recorded service, hello, and thank you for saying yes to God's invitation to pray with us today, to worship and to not only give thanks for our baptisms, but to affirm our baptisms today with five of our young people who have been on a journey this year talking about the Beatitudes, talking about the gifts of Holy Spirit, talking about what it means to be a young person who is a follower of Christ in the world today. That's a little bit of what we're going to celebrate, this culmination of this journey. Now, we know, candidates, that you've been on this journey a lot longer than just this year or just today. Your family has been bringing you to D, uh, WD4 and to catechism and, and sharing the word with you and introducing you to the person of Jesus. And we're grateful for that. And we pray with you and for you, parents. We're grateful for the ways that you support our young people. So we will uh, have an opportunity to celebrate all of that very soon. Want to uh, welcome especially our guests who have joined us, family members who have come from far away. What's the furthest somebody traveled to be here today? North Dakota. Anybody got North Dakota? Further than North Dakota? Good. Welcome. It's good to have you here with us. And glad you had safe travels. Yes. For all of you who traveled this morning, made a special effort to be here today. Thank you and God bless you. I wanted to also extend an invitation. Kyleen um, has prepared some uh, mattings that go around the certificates for confirmation for our candidates. They're on the table in the back. And you, as family members and guests, are invited after the service to stop at the table and to write a personal note on those mats uh, to any of our candidates, those who will be confirmed today, okay? Um, and they are in the back of the church, right, Kyleen? Where did Kyleen go? They're in the back, right? Okay, and they'll be there um, until... And so candidates, I'll try to remind you at the end, but Stop by that table before you leave the church and pick up your certificate and your mat today from Kyleen, okay? Give me a nod, candidates. Yep, got it, Blummel. All right, quit harassing us. All right, we've been listening to you all year. Let's get on with it. Okay. As we uh, begin our worship this morning, I want to invite you just to take a nice deep breath and allow yourself to be in this space to be here in this time, welcome Holy Spirit, Ruach, breath of God, to fill you right now. Remember how intimately close God is to you, as close to you as your own breath. No other place we need to be. Any stress from the morning, we just let that melt away, let it be carried away from us by our loving God. So I want to welcome Shauna and Laura to the front and let us, and Mary, and let us begin our worship with a song. I invite you to all to please stand as you are able. As we worship, and the words are in your bulletin that you were handed. If you for some reason don't have one, let us know. We will get you a bulletin. Um, I know that my Redeemer lives.
Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. As water is poured in our font today by Andrea, we say together the following prayer. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. Now, in these waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water, and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe every tear. To you, our beginning and our end our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. As we sing our song together, Eli and I will be coming around to remind you of your baptisms with um, a sprinkling of waters. As it touches your body, remember that you're invited into a life with Christ that is pure and refreshing and new. I invite you to make the sign of the cross as these waters touch you, the sign of your own baptisms in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing.
with me. Father in heaven, we come here this morning on this glorious day as our confirmands get ready to affirm their faith in front of all of us. And we pray that with that, that they know that they are a chosen child of God. Each and every one of us has been chosen a child of God. And with that comes forgiveness over and over again. With that comes freedom. With that comes love. Love that never ends. Love that is not judgmental. Love that is not earned. But love that is freely given to each and every one of us. And with that comes eternal life. Because of what you have done on the cross for us. That you have died for us and rose again that all who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Help us to know that no matter what we do, you see us, you know us, you love us, and you forgive us. In your name we pray. I invite you to speak the prayer in our bulletin together. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face and enable us to reflect your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. And I invite... Okay, we are going to do Children's Church. Thank you. So I have Miss Linda Kenny coming down. If you are a child, confirmands, you don't get to go down. But if you are a child um, that would like to go down with Miss Linda Kenny to hear God's word in a different way, um, you are more than welcome to invited to do that. Yes, it's going to be lots of fun. Um, they have a good time down there. And so what you do is you head on down with Miss Linda Kenny. <clears throat> Excuse me. During, uh, while we're hearing God's word up here, and then you'll come right back up when the sermon is over, and so you'll get to see all the confirm and stuff that's happening too. Don't you worry. Um, so it's wonderful to have you all here today. We are glad that your families brought you. Um, I'm going to invite you and our congregation, to, if they feel comfortable, to extend a hand of blessing over these children um, to say, hey, we see you and we bless you. Father in heaven, thank you for these children who are in our midst. We are so grateful to have them here today. Open their hearts, their minds, and their ears as they hear about God's love, as they hear about your love for them, your forgiveness and all the things that come with that love. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome. You guys are going to head that way. We'll see you in a little bit. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. All this time, Saul was breathing down the necks of the master's disciples out for the kill. He went to the chief priest and got arrest warrants to take to the meeting places in Damascus, so that if he found anyone there belonging to the way, whether men or women, he could arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem. He set off. When he got to the outskirts of Damascus, he was suddenly dazed by a blinding flash of light. As he fell to the ground, he heard a voice, Saul, Saul, why are you out to get me? He said, who are you, master? I am Jesus, the one you're hunting down. I want you to get up and enter the city. In the city, you'll be told what to do next. His companion stood there dumbstruck. They could hear the sound, but couldn't see anyone. While Saul, picking himself up off the ground, found himself stone blind. They had to take him by the hand and lead him into Damascus. He continued blind for three days. He ate nothing, drank nothing. There was a disciple in Damascus by the name of Ananias. The master spoke to him in a vision. Ananias, yes, master, he answered. Get up and go over to Straight Avenue. Ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus. His name is Saul. He's there praying. He has just had a dream in which he saw a man named Ananias enter the house and lay hands on him 
so he could see again. Ananias protested, Master, you can't be serious. Everybody is talking about this man and the terrible things he has been doing. His reign of terror against your people in Jerusalem. And now he's shown up here with papers from the chief priest that give him license to do the same to us. But the master said, Don't argue. Go. I have picked him as my personal representative to non-Jews and kings and Jews. And now I'm about to show him what he's in for, the hard suffering that goes with this job. So Ananias went and found the house, placed his hands on blind Saul, and said, Brother Saul, the master sent me, the same Jesus you saw on your way here. He sent me so you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He could see again. He got to his feet, was baptized, and sat down with them to a hearty meal. Saul spent a few days getting acquainted with the Damascus disciples, but then went right to work, wasting no time, preaching in the meeting places that Jesus, that this Jesus was the Son of God. They were caught off guard by this, and not at all sure they could trust him. They kept saying, Isn't this the man who wreaked havoc in Jerusalem among the believers? And didn't he come here to do the same thing? Arrest us and drag us off to jail in Jerusalem for sentencing by the high priest. Word of God, word of life. You'll find Psalm 30 in your bulletin, if you will read along with me. I give you all the credit, God. You got me out of that mess. You didn't let my foes gloat. God, my God, I yelled for help, and you put me together. God, you pulled me out of the grave, gave me another chance at life when I was down and out. All you saints, sing your hearts to God. Thank him to his face. He gets angry once in a while, but across a lifetime there is only love. The nights of crying your eyes out give ways to days of laughter. When things were going great, I crowed. I've got it made. I'm God's favorite. He made me king of the mountain. Then you looked the other way, and I fell to pieces. I called out to you, God. I laid my case before you. Can you sell me for a profit when I'm dead? Auction me off at a cemetery yard sale. When I'm dust to dust, my songs and stories of you won't sell. So listen and be kind. Help me out of this. You did it. You changed vile lament into whirling dance. You ripped off my black mourning band and decked me with wildflowers. I'm about to burst with song. I can't keep quiet about God, my God. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Valerie. The Lord be with you. I invite you to rise for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. After this, Jesus appeared again to his disciples, this time at the Tiberias Sea, that is the Sea of Galilee. This is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the brothers Zebedee, James and John, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter announced, I'm going fishing. The rest of them replied, we're going with you. So they went out and they got in the boat. They caught nothing that night. And when the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach, but they didn't recognize him. 
Jesus spoke to them. Good morning, children. Did you catch anything for breakfast? They answered, no. He said, throw the net off the right side of the boat and see what happens. They did what he said. And all of a sudden, there were so many fish in it that they weren't strong enough to pull it into the boat. And then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It's the master. And when Simon Peter realized that it was the master, he threw on some clothes, for he was stripped for work, and he dove into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat for they weren't far from land, a hundred yards or so, and they were pulling the full net of fish. When they got out of the boat, they saw a fire laid with fish and bread cooking. Jesus said, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter joined them and pulled the net to shore, 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the net didn't rip. Jesus said, breakfast is ready. Not one of the disciples dared ask, who are you? They knew it was the master. Jesus then took the bread, broke it, and gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time Jesus had shown himself alive to the disciples since being raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon... Son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Master, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Jesus then asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Master, you know I love you. Jesus said, shepherd my sheep. And then he said it a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he asked for the third time, do you love me? And so Peter answered, Master, you know everything there is to know. You've got to know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I'm telling you the very truth now. When you were young, you dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted. But when you get old, you'll have to stretch out your hands while someone else dresses you and takes you where you don't want to go. He said this to hint at the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then Jesus commanded, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. So do me a favor, squint a little bit. You ever do this in your daily life, squint? Like in your classroom, do you have to squint at the class, at the chalkboard once in a while? Do they have chalkboards anymore? <laughs> I, do you squint, if you squint, do you squint to see better, more clearly sometimes? Especially those of us who maybe their eyesight's a little, yeah, I can see better, I can see you. Or do you squint to furry thing up a little bit? You want to maybe see some things not as intensely. You know, there's, there's a theme that runs through our readings this weekend. It has to do with seeing, being able to see clearly, being able to see the risen Christ. The members in the community that are in these readings sometimes saw Christ and sometimes they failed to see Christ. But it always wasn't an eyeball thing. It was an experience thing. So we'll come back to that. You know, when I was reading this, the first thing that jumped out to me is that very last phrase of the gospel. Jesus commanded them, follow me. That's a pretty clear invitation from Jesus, isn't it? Pretty, pretty clear command. It took me back to when I was a sophomore in high school. 
I went to uh, Waller in Dubuque, and one day we were having um, a retreat day. And I went to the retreat, and I was filled with resistance. The theme of the retreat was, follow me. And we were told in the early part of the retreat, this was Jesus inviting us to follow him more closely. The problem was not that I didn't believe or that I didn't want to, but as a sophomore in high school, I was, like a lot of sophomores in high school, a mess. Not a hot mess, just a mess. I was miserable. I really didn't like myself. In fact, I really despised myself most days. I was struggling to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be. See, we had moved across town, and I had gotten in with a group of guys who were into smoking dope. And I got into that group because I wanted a place to fit in. I wanted to belong. I wanted to have a group of folks that I could hang out with and just, you know, be myself outside of school. But what started to happen to me was a deterioration. I started to fight with my parents because I wasn't honest with them a lot of times about what I was doing or where I was going. I was fighting with my sisters all the time. I wasn't happy about being at home. I wasn't happy about sharing anything. I started to struggle with my schoolwork, which I had never done before. I wasn't sure if I was going to go out for baseball or track again that year. I just didn't feel like it. I really was miserable. I was lost. I remember feeling the resistance, almost anger that was welling up inside of me as I was at that retreat that day. And in the afternoon, I clearly remember we got to the point where we had Eucharist, Mass. And during the Mass, I heard Jesus say to me again through the preacher that day, it doesn't matter how messed up you are. It doesn't matter how miserable you are. It doesn't matter how much you're suffering. Jesus says, I love you. And I choose you. And I have a plan for you that is meaningful and purposeful. And it will give your life meaning. And I remember hearing that, and for some reason, that washed over me as I received Eucharist in my hand that day. As I took the body of Christ into my body, I thought, how can I be so miserable and have Christ alive in me right now? And it was like this transformation took place. I didn't see anything. I experienced the risen Christ present to me in the Eucharist that day, and it changed my heart. I remember feeling overwhelmed and I wept. I started crying in front of my classmates, those around me. I started crying as all of this misery and suffering and doubt and loathing poured out of me as I felt love. I was filled with enthusiasm. I, figuratively speaking, jumped out of the boat that day. I left behind that group of guys that I had been hanging out with. I left behind my intentions to be destructive in my life, and I swam towards Christ. I swam towards what I desired to be a better life. It didn't mean I was perfect. It was clear to me. As a sophomore in high school, I was not called to be perfect. I was called to have an intensity, a desire to be more like Christ. And that's what I wanted to do. And it's made all the difference. Follow me. Follow me, Jesus says. He said it to Peter and to Saul, Paul, in our readings today. Saul, and I don't know, maybe you hear your own stories in these stories today. These are the leaders of our Christian faith. These are the pillars upon which our lives are built. And look at what they went through to become the disciples that Christ called them to be. Saul, the brightest and best of his class, the most righteous Jew around, filled with violence, determined to kill anybody who was following the way 
following Jesus, the supposed raised Messiah, this, this breakaway sect, they were demeaning the Jewish faith. And Paul was called from Tarsus and Turkey to come down to Jerusalem to put an end to this movement. And Saul was happy to do it. He presided over Timothy's martyrdom and he went to the chief priest and he said, give me papers, I want to do it more. I want to do it more. I want to go up to Damascus, to Syria. There's bunches of people up there. I want to go and get them. I want to bring them back to Jerusalem and make a, a spectacle of them. I want to put an end to this. And they happily gave him the papers. And here is Saul on the road to Damascus to carry out that violence. And we hear he's struck down to the ground by a flash of light. What's going on? He hears a voice. Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? I'm the one you're pursuing. Every time you hurt one of my followers, you hurt me. Go into Damascus. Wait there. You'll find out what to do. You'll be told what to do. But in the meantime, you are blind. He didn't see Jesus with his eyeballs. He heard clearly the voice of the risen Christ. And so did his companions. They took him into Damascus where he waited at Judas' house. Not Judas Iscariot, a different Judas. He's there and we hear about another disciple, Ananias, who receives a vision as well. He's told to go to Saul because Jesus wants Ananias to tell Saul, I've chosen you. I'm going to change your life. I've got a mission for you to the Jews and to the Gentiles and to the kings. You who are a Roman citizen, you who are educated in Roman and Greek philosophy, you who are a Jew by birth, you are my bridge. You are the one who will expand my kingdom. And Ananias protests. You hear what this guy's doing? He's killing people like me. And the Lord says to him, quit resisting. Quit arguing. Go, follow me, Ananias. And he goes to Saul and he says to Saul, Christ has a mission for you. And Saul doesn't see Jesus. His heart is torn open by the invitation from Ananias to be forgiven, to be transformed, to be touched by the power of that same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, sent on a mission that would, yes, mean some suffering as he let go of his old ways, as relationships died, as Saul put on a new person, it would mean suffering. But Ananias said to him, this is Jesus' call for you, and he will be with you all the way. Come, Saul, follow me. And we know Saul, Paul, is really the one who began the Christianity that we practice today. His life transformed because he encountered Christ. And then quickly, just to jump to that gospel passage, we hear about Peter and the disciples back in the Galilee. After Jesus has ascended to heaven, they're back in the Galilee, and they start to forget they go back to what they know, fishing. And while they're out fishing, they are in the darkness. And what do we hear? They catch nothing. Nothing in their darkness. But the next morning, they see someone on shore. You can imagine them squinting a little bit. Huh, who's that? Who's that look like? Hey, children, have you caught anything? No. Try the other side of the boat. What? Put your net out the other side of the boat. All right, this isn't funny. The last time we did this, oh, wait, I remember this. Remember back when Jesus met us the first day and we hadn't caught anything and he told us to try the other side of the boat and we did it and we caught so many fish it almost sank our boats and then we started following him and do you remember? I remember. And the disciple whom Jesus loved says to Peter, I think it's I think it's the master. Peter says, yeah, it's got to be. I remember too. 
He puts on a few clothes and he jumps in the water and swims his way towards Christ. Clearly, a baptismal image that immerses him into this encounter with Christ. He didn't see him with his eyeballs, clearly. He heard his voice, and he remembered, and his heart was stirred. And when they get to the shore, Jesus says something very interesting. Bring some of the fish you caught and join them to the fish I have. Isn't that like the church? The people being caught throughout time, brought to be with the fish, the people that Jesus has caught through time. The church unified that day in an encounter with Christ. They were fed just as Paul was baptized and was fed after his scales fell from his eyes after his conversion. So Peter was baptized again, reaffirming his baptism, his commitment to Christ, where he went and was fed. And there they remember what Christ had promised them. Fullness of life. Follow me. Jesus says to Peter after this three-time exchange, follow me. Follow me. I don't know. Last Saturday, I was at a synod council meeting, and we were joking with each other, teasing about the fact that we as Lutherans, we're kind of shy about evangelizing, about inviting people to come follow Jesus. We don't easily invite people to come to church with us or share a little bit of our own faith stories. Why is that? Why are we shy about our faith? Is it because we don't believe or or think of ourselves as the mystical body of Christ, as Christ's presence in the world today? Are we maybe not convinced that our inviting others to see Jesus makes a difference in the world? Maybe we think it's no big deal. Maybe we haven't had our lives transformed like me or Paul or Peter. Maybe you haven't heard and taken in the message that you are the beloved disciple of Jesus, called to remember and to point out how Christ is alive in our midst today. Maybe you haven't heard someone say to you, you're the beloved disciple of Christ who stands at the foot of the cross, seeing the suffering of the world, pointing out where people are being mistreated. Maybe you haven't been the disciple of Christ who asks or been asked to care for the sorrowing and the vulnerable and the grieving, and the mothers of those who are suffering. Maybe you haven't been asked to witness to the powerful acts of love that happened through Jesus, that happened in the world today. Maybe you don't believe you're the beloved disciple of Christ. How can we point out what we don't see and what we don't know? How is it that we as beloved disciples of Christ can be sure that Christ is in our midst today? It is no different than Saul or Peter or those early disciples. When we encounter Christ, when we have a meal prepared for us, when we have a life given for us, when we are served by somebody, when we have an opportunity for reconciliation, mercy, forgiveness, when we see life restored, we know Christ is alive in our midst and we are called as the beloved disciples to say, there is the Lord. Let us follow him. Supporting each other in the midst of our sinfulness. Do you, did you pick up on what Jesus said to Peter the very first time? Peter, do you love me more than these? I wonder what the these are that Jesus was referring to in Peter's life. 
I'm thinking, as I imagine, I'm thinking the these in Peter's life was the fishing, was the boat, was his comrades, his fishing partners, his, his buddies, the wine that they could have after they got home. What is the these, the family maybe, his home, uh, Galilee? Do you love me more than these, Peter? Well, you know I do, Lord. Are you ready to let them go, Peter, to follow me? Are you ready to let go of these to follow Jesus? What are your these that you need to let go of to follow Jesus? I feel a little like Dr. Seuss right now. What are the these that you're being invited to let go of today in order to say yes to following Jesus, to say yes to being the beloved disciple of Christ who points out how Christ is alive in the world today? Christ says, follow me. What is your answer? How many of you will join me in saying yes when Christ says, follow me? How many of you will join me in saying yes when Christ says, follow me? Yes. How many of you will say yes when Christ says, follow me? Yes. Then let's sing about it. I invite you to please stand as you are able. As we sing, blessed are they.
Let's invite you to be seated. As Kyleen comes forward to begin our ceremony of affirmation of baptism, I want to invite you just to prepare. Um, a little later on, we'll say the Apostles' Creed together. You can find that on page 85 of the green hymnals that are in your pews. If you want to go ahead and open to that right now, just keep it in front of you. At this time in our worship, we pause to celebrate the witness of each of these young people as they affirm their baptism with their own voice. At the baptism of each individual, the relationship God desires was proclaimed and embraced by a parent or a guardian. This indeed was only a beginning. With each passing year, Holy Spirit continued to stir them to grow in understanding of God through encounters with the word, the creeds, the Lord's Prayer, the sacraments, and the teachings of the church. Here at St. Paul, we have engaged these students in transformational ministry through large group teaching, small group faith sharing, servant opportunities, and regular worship. It is a tradition of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America to now present our daughters and sons in worship for the sake of witness so that we all might be made one with Christ forgiveness and grace. We are grateful for the work you have done as parents, as we thank Dan Christensen, Denny Henricks, Cheryl White, Sebastian Goldsmith, and Barb Wilson for serving as mentors to these young people. Today, these students will affirm their growth in faith, desire for a personal relationship with Christ, and willingness to take on a more mature role in Christ's church. We ask you to stand as your name is called. Simon Robertson, Connor Capron, Andrea Gigerich, Garrett Ledoux, and Noah Smith. Wow, applause just for showing up. That's awesome. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we rejoice that you now desire to make public profession of your faith and assume a greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community. I just remind you, in holy baptism, our Lord received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have pondered God's purpose for you. You have been formed by God's word, nourished at God's holy table, and called to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ. So now, therefore, I ask you, we ask you, to profess your faith, to reject sin, and confess the faith of Christ's church, the faith in which we baptize. Confirmant, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? If so, say, I renounce them. If you're curious about the sins or the things that they came up with as a list of what they are renouncing, you see it on the front of the pulse, our handout, um, our bulletin for the week. It gives you just an idea of some of the things that they are, in fact, renouncing as being devilish or sinful. And so, Confirmand, I ask you, do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I believe. I want to invite the entire congregation, all of my, you, my friends, to stand and let us confess our common faith together through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended in heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I want to invite everybody except the confirmant to take a seat. So I want to invite you, Confirman. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue the covenant God made with you in holy baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, say, yes, I do, and I ask God to help me. We got you. <laughs> My friends, people of God, do you promise to support these confirmon and pray for them in Christ? If so, say we do and we ask God to help us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, throughout water and Holy Spirit. You give us all new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. We pray this same blessing upon these, our confirmation students, as we call them forward now, one at a time, with their families and those who have come to support them, to call upon your gifts, Holy Spirit. So I want to invite you, Connor, to come forward with your family. Look how excited he is. <laughs> Holy Spirit, stir up in Connor your gifts of wisdom and understanding, courage, knowledge, right judgment, reverence, and wonder and awe in your presence. Peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. I invite you to go back. I invite Garrett to come forward with his family. Holy Spirit, stir up in Garrett your gifts of wisdom and understanding, knowledge and right judgment, courage, reverence and awe in your presence. Amen. Garrett, peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. Invite... Noah to come forward with his family. Holy Spirit, stir up in Noah your gifts of wisdom and understanding, knowledge and right judgment, courage, reverence, and wonder and awe in your presence. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Thank you very much. Andrea, I'll invite you.
Holy Spirit, stir up in Andrea your gifts of wisdom and understanding. Right judgment and knowledge. Courage, reverence, and wonder and awe in your presence. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. Simon? smile. Holy Spirit, stir up in Simon your gifts of wisdom and understanding, right judgment and knowledge, courage, reverence, and wonder and awe in your presence. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. You, you okay? Okay, good. Confirmand, I would ask you to rise one more time. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and Holy Spirit, you have given us new birth and cleansed us from sin and raised us to eternal life. Let us rejoice with our brothers and sister in Christ. Together we give thanks and praise to God for the good news. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Let's do that one more time. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I would invite you to affirm these young people with your applause. Let us continue our prayer with the intercessions or the prayers of the church. I would invite you all to rise, please. (laughs) Set free from captivity to sin and death, We pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, fill us with new life. Send us into the world as you sent your apostles, Philip and James, to invite people to come and see your wondrous acts in Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with Darren, Hannah, new Animosa superintendent, and all educators. God, in your mercy. Revive ecosystems along coastlands that have been devastated by natural forces and human negligence. Establish plant and animal life that purifies air and water and that feeds humans and other living creatures. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Accompany laborers who get little rest from their work. Give them hope when they struggle to produce what they need. Give all who labor fair treatment and just wages. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore all people who cry to you for help, especially Doris Kula and Ed Allaire. Turn their mourning into dancing, clothe them with joy, and put a testimony of healing and praise on their lips. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be present to faithful ones who are persecuted for following you, and especially the church. Sustain them by your faithfulness and give them strength in the name of Jesus. God, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Join our voices with angels, creatures, and all the saints in praising Christ and bestowing upon him all blessing and honor and glory. Reveal Christ's glory to us and through us in our worship. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. Thank you very much. I invite you to take a moment to share Christ's peace with those around you. Peace is one of those gifts that we receive from God. Really, the the word shalom is more what we're sharing, that sense of harmony, that sense of oneness that comes with sharing our lives together. That's what Christ prays for us. And so it is with gratitude for shalom that goes beyond our understanding, but also in gratitude for the gifts, the treasures that you share, the time and the talent that you give to lift each other up, especially those in our midst who are hurting or grieving or suffering. For the, all of these things, we are grateful. And so we join our voices together in singing the doxology. Praise God from blessings flow. Praise And so now in the power of that same Holy Spirit, we recall with great thanksgiving the memorial Christ left for us by singing, Remember Now, My Children. You can find the words in your bulletin. share our lives with God above. And when Jesus was asked by his disciples, teach us to pray, he gave them what we call the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray it together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the risen Christ is truly with us in this meal. All of us who hunger, all of us who thirst to know righteousness are invited to eat and to drink. Come, know the love of your God. For those of you who would like to participate in communion, we invite you to come down the center aisle today where you will be offered the body of Christ uh, by Sean or me. And then we invite you to step past us where you'll find the tables with the trays of wine and juice behind us. The juice is the lighter colored in the center of the trays. The wine is the outer two rings. If you have any questions, just uh, tap us on the shoulder and ask us, okay?
invite you to rise. And let us say our final prayer together. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life. In Jesus' name, amen. We send you out with that same power that you would know that same power is flowing through you. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, that that same power is within us. And we are invited to share that with others. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of the take a moment to thank our music ministers for leading us in such powerful prayer today. I want to remind you as well to stop by the back table to sign the mattings for the frames and uh, just have a great day everybody, okay? Continue to celebrate in a good way. The Lord be with you.
The blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage now and forever. Amen. Amen. You are the beloved disciples of Christ. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We will try to be out in the park next Sunday, 1030. It looks like it's going to be 60s. So 1030 in the park, 830 is inside. We also have services on Wednesday. Um, Lilies, if you were somebody who donated a lily um, in memory or honor of somebody, we are going to take the lilies out of the sanctuary today. So if you were somebody that was donating and would like to take it home with you and enjoy it at home, please come and get one. Thank you. 